This conference will now be recorded. Hi, everybody. I'm Du Tinnen, and we are going to be doing a training today um, for all of our City Current partners. But Kelly wants to welcome us all to the call. Well, I just want to thank everybody for jumping on here. And first and foremost, Du, I want to thank you for sharing your expertise with us. Um, I know for me personally, the new virtual meeting world um, is a little foreign, um, and it's not something I probably feel comfortable with like I should. So if there's a silver lining to come out of this, I think we're all going to gain um, some new skills on technology. Um, but Du was so kind to do a training for us as a City Current team last week, and it went so well we asked if she would be willing to do it for all of the partners um, because this is her world this is what she does every day and I was really surprised there were some pretty simple tricks and tips that um, I think you can walk away from this training being able to run a professional as the dog barks <laughs> a professional virtual meeting um, but really, truly, um, you know, especially too in this time, too, I, I think having a, even just video conferencing with our partners um, is a way for us to stay connected as a community. And it's been nice to just see a face. So, do I will let you take it away, but I just wanted to say thanks and welcome to all of our partners. And also, if there's anything that we as City Current can be doing to help any of you, please don't hesitate and ask. I know, John, you sent me some stuff to share. If you've got information and resources, we're happy to help in any way we can. So, so good. Thank you so much. So, um, yes, our virtual world has definitely, definitely changed. And, and I think that it's important that we continue to talk about everything that we're doing. Um, our world changed very, very quickly about a week ago. And I think that it's important that we all realize that we should be leading our meetings virtually whenever possible. And so I'm going to be talking today about the four steps that I recommend you take to lead an effective virtual meeting. Um, also, I'll be talking about what equipment I use, how long I've been doing it, um, what you should do with your pets, and all of the things in between. But I'm definitely going to leave time at the end for questions. So if you have any questions, please let me know. So um, the next thing I want to talk about is being resilient. Um, I talk a lot about how important it is to have a great attitude and none of us in any way were prepared for all of the changes that were going to be coming our way. I saw something very interesting in the news. Um, it was on a podcast about working from home now and um, I'm an extrovert. I spend as much time as I can with people. And so now being secluded, and the only human I see is my husband <laughs> within six feet, um, is very different. And one of the things that it said is, this is going to be a change for us. How do we adjust to not being around people? And they said, it's very interesting that you bring it up because half of the population are introverts and they've been living in our extroverted world all this time. So this is an, ext or an introvert's dream come true to now be living virtually and working from home and uh, being secluded a little bit more. And so, I think that we all need to look at this as we're all facing changes. And some of us, these changes are really good. For some of us, these changes are not easy. And one of the books that I love about resilience is, um, is called Resilience um, by Tim, by, I don't know, I can't think Tim, Gr Tim Grimes, maybe his last name is, but it's called Resilience. And Tim writes a book, um, wrote a book about how to be more resilient in life. And one of the things that he says is you don't necessarily have to think that life is going to be the way it used to be, but instead really looking at it and saying, how fast can I adjust to this new normal? So that's one of the things that I'm going to challenge all of you with, that instead of saying, man, I wish I could be with my friends or man, I wish I could be eating out at restaurants or doing all of the things that we normally do, instead, deal with what you can. In fact, what I call that is controlling the controllables, the things that you're 100 percent in charge of, and that is your attitude and your effort. So the activities that you're doing. But your attitude is one of the things you're in control of. So instead of looking at this and saying, I wish I could 
do some other things, instead look at it in, in a different way. Um, and so I recommend that video conferencing is so important because it keeps us connected. It's far more personal than a phone call. And so the more that you can be with people virtually and be sharing your, your face, I recommend that people continue to turn on your video cameras because it helps us see everyone and it helps us stay more connected and being able to talk to other faces regardless of what you look like in your home environment. So I do recommend that you turn on your video every single time you can so that we can we can see you. And that brings me to my next point is that you look great. Most oftentimes we don't want to be on video because we don't like the way we look or we don't have our hair brushed or we don't have a professional outfit on. And I just want to let you know that that it just doesn't matter. Like what matters is that we're staying connected <clears throat> and that you do dress professionally in the best way that you can for video conferencing. And I'm going to talk about how to look your best professional best in in video. So um, and and also realizing we're all working from home where you may not have a studio set up where Jeremy has it set up where he can do his videos and I have my studio set up where I can do my videos. But I've been working from home since 2011. I've been doing this virtual living for a long time where I have been doing virtual trainings, where I've been leading conferences and where I've been doing things that are wildly different than what we have been doing. So my first recommendation, if this is the first time that you're working from home and you don't have a dedicated office at home, I recommend that you create a working space. And what I mean by that is whether it's at your kitchen table or a table in your bedroom or a closet or in your basement, create a virtual working space that makes it feel like you are still in the office in some way or another. So if you used double monitors or if you used something at your office, don't say, I hate working from home because I don't have my double screens or I don't have any of these things. I just want to let you know that it's so important that you have some of these things at your home office the same way. So when I'm working from home, I have double monitors set up and I have my laptop. So I actually have three different <coughs> monitors and I'm gonna share with you how I use them. So I have my presentation and my camera on the one that I'm going to be looking at. On my second screen on the right side of me, I have all of your faces so I can still see everybody and see what's going on. And then on my third screen is where I have my PowerPoint presentations showing so that I can see what's coming up and what's next. So I use my three screens at home the same way. Um, I also have lights and all of that kind of thing, but I'll be talking about that and you can decide what you want to do. But the first thing that I want to um, share with you is, you know, I'm going to go ahead and share a different screen and share this with you. And so for any of you who want to know where I'm getting my tools and what I'm using. Um, my personal blog is salescoachdo.com. And I actually have a website set up. Um, you can do salescoachdo.com forward slash tools, or on my homepage, there is a tools button that you can click on. But one of the things I wanna show share with you is that these have the links to all of the things that I use at home. So I use the Logitech Brio webcam. I have a newer ring light kit. I use my MacBook Pro. Um, I use my Apple AirPods because this doesn't keep me restricted and using earbuds does create better sound quality. And then I have my 24 inch monitors that I use and then all of the Apple things I use, my trackpad, my iPhone, my iPad, um, and then my webs under the website tools, um, I under, oh, excuse me, I'm sorry, scrolling crazily for you. Right here um, under the camera, and I'll highlight it here so you can see it. Um, 
are the apps that I use when I'm using video conferencing. So today I'm gonna to talk about GoToMeeting, Zoom, and also Teams. So if any of you wanna know what tools I'm talking about, they're all listed on my website here so that you can see them as we go through. And we'll go ahead and go back to our presentation and I'll share that back with you. So those are the things that I'm going to be referencing um, as we go through our presentation today. And also, please feel free to ask any questions as we are heading into this as, as well. So as I said, I've been working from home since 2011. And so these tools that I'm going to be going through are all of the things that I've continued to use that work wildly successful, and matter so much. So these are the four steps that I do every single time that I am leading a virtual meeting. And the first one is that the first step I do is I check my camera settings. So if you're using an external camera, I just turn on the camera settings. <clears throat> and there's two reasons I do this. Number one, I wanna make sure that my external camera is working properly. I can't tell you how many times I have gone to start a meeting and my camera is frozen or it's not working, it's not recognizing it on my computer, and I've had to do a full restart. And let me tell you, when you have to do a full restart and you are trying to lead a meeting, that's not awesome. So that's why I do it first. First and foremost, long before my meeting is started, I check my camera settings. The second thing that I wanna do is I check my background. I wanna know what's behind me. Did I forget about anything that could be listed or, or seen? Or is there some weird shadow? Is there some strange thing behind me? And so just angling my camera and making sure that everything looks good is really, really important. So that's number one, check your camera. Do we have any questions about cameras or settings or anything like that before we go on to number two? And also you can use the chat window, by the way. If you have a question, there is a, a chat option there. If you don't want to unmute yourself and ask the question, you can use chat as well. Okay, we'll go on to number two. Number two is really important. Put your pets away. Um, I loved that we had a barking dog on our conference because that's exactly what we're going to be dealing with in the next however long we're working from home. Is um, The reason we wanna put our pets away is because pets are a distraction. I love my dog, Peanut. He's wonderful, but I'll tell you what, if he sees something or if something happens, he is going to be the first one um, that he is the first one that's going to bark when somebody walks by. So I always put my pets away because they are a distraction. And he, I just put them in our bedroom. I shut the door. He's locked up. I know he's not going to be distracting me or anyone else during a video conference call and that I'm not going to have to leave the video conference call to let my dog out or anything like that. Um, I also believe that we should put our cats away as well. And that's because we don't notice it that our cats walking on the counter behind us or on the shelf behind us or walking across our desk because we see our cats so regularly. But it really is important that we at least try and create the least amount of distractions as possible. So, um, Yes, put your pets away. Any thoughts or ideas on, on putting your pets away before we move on to number three? All right, easy enough. And yes, John, I saw your chat and we are going to get to that. So I will get to your question. Anybody have any questions um, about number two? Okay, we're gonna talk about number three. Number three is to close your blinds and turn on lights. There's two reasons behind this. The first thing that I do is close any blinds. And that is because when you have a bright light behind you, it can create a distracting halo. And it's not a distracting halo to you, 
but it's a distracting halo to us because we can't see you very well. So I actually recommend that you don't sit directly in front of a um, window if you can avoid it in any way possible, or just close the blinds so that there's not that distracting bright light coming in um, behind you. The second thing that I do is a front light brightens your face. And so I think that it's really important that whenever possible, you create some sort of front light to brighten your face. So I use a bright light and actually um, I'm going to turn it off just so you can see the difference of what it does. So I use two different types of lights and I have a light on each side of me. And so now you can see that I have a window on the on this side of me. So you can see that I am brighter. And it's not that it is distracting in any way, but front light just helps make everything a little bit better. So I use the bright light and so I just turn them back on so that you can see. And now all of the shadows and everything disappears from behind me. And this is more for presentations, but it also creates a pretty professional look um, that is very easy to do. And you can see that my bright light camera is right, you know, is just right at my at my desk. And so I do keep my lights going um, when I am there. I also have a standing desk, but I'll talk about if you don't have a standing desk, how you can adjust your camera and make it look square on your on your face and, and make it work that way as well. Um, if you don't have a ring light, you don't necessarily have to spend the money to buy one, however you can. But the second thing that you can do is just have a lamp in front of you and that will do the front lighting that you want it to have as well. So if there's any way, if you, especially if you're gonna be leading a video conference training, that you have front lighting in some way, it just creates a, a, a better look. So any questions on number three, closing your blinds, turning on lights, how to manage any of that? Okay, number four. Number four is start the meeting. It is so important to start the meeting. So I use GoToMeeting, I use Zoom, I use Teams, and I use Skype. Here's the difference between the four. Number one, GoToMeeting, I like the navigation best because I do a lot of video conference training. And so that is the one that I like, um, and I have the professional version. I can have up to 250 attendees join. I buy it on an annual membership, which is roughly $350. There's another version for roughly $150 that only allows up to 100 people to join. So it really is up to you how many people are joining. Number two is Zoom. Zoom is another meeting platform very much like GoToMeeting. And I use Zoom just as much. Some of my clients prefer it. And so I use both of them. The reason I don't prefer to use Zoom all the time is because separating out the windows and being able to see people as well as my screen that I'm sharing isn't as easy. But if you are just having a video conference call, Zoom works great. The one thing I really like about Zoom is that you can have a free membership with Zoom and lead meetings up to 40 minutes long for free at no cost. Um, and then you can join for, I think it's roughly $130 on anything longer. And then you can record and have online space and things like that. I do not recommend that you upgrade and keep your videos stored online unless you want a stored online um, library. Otherwise, just grab your video, download it, and then you're going to have it working great for you. Teams. Teams is part of your Microsoft Office suite, and you can use it for free. And it is just T-E-A-M-S. If you Google Microsoft Teams, you can download it and use it for free if you are using um, that. We, as a team, 
at Skillway, we use Teams for all of our team meetings and all of our one-on-ones that we have with Teams. And that is because we can share our screens and also see things online that we're sharing through Office 365. And then we're not always having to make sure that nobody else is online. And then um, finally, Skype. So Skype is still around. You can use good old fashioned Skype for personal reasons or Skype for business. So um, Skype for Business is another application that you can use. It's connected to Office 365. The reason I don't use it very often is because the functionality for people who use Mac computers versus PCs. So if you have a Mac laptop or you use a Mac, the functionality is really clunky with Skype. And so I, if I don't know what my clients are using, I try not to use Skype. Some of my clients use Skype only, and so I know how to use Skype as well. And, um, and those are my recommendations on all of the meetings. Now, Roger asked a question and he said, any thoughts on WebEx? Absolutely, if you still have a license for WebEx, I recommend it. WebEx is um, probably one of the very first um, companies that started, and Zoom and WebEx are actually owned by the same company now. And so the functionality is gonna look almost identical to Zoom. So if you still have a, a WebEx license, then I would recommend using that. I am all about saving money, especially because we don't know where our revenue, what our revenue is gonna look like in 30, 60 or 90 days. So if you have WebEx, <laughs> use WebEx, use WebEx. All right, any other thoughts, ideas, questions that I can answer about what tools I use for virtual meetings. So good. Okay, so my second thing is that I recommend that you start the meeting at least 10 to 15 minutes early when you are leaving. And that is because of number one. Remember when I said your camera settings may not be working or working properly by starting the meeting early you can then be one step ahead of the game if you have to do a quick restart or something like that every now and then my apple airpods will not connect to my computer same thing it's like i have to do some troubleshooting um even today when i started the meeting for some reason go to meeting was picking my laptop camera rather than my logitech camera and um and so i was able to just switch the cameras and it worked but sometimes i have to do a restart so i really recommend that you if you are leading the meeting jump on with enough time to test all of your equipment and do a quick test to make sure that everything is going to work before you start leading the meeting and then you have to restart and it and it works in a really awful way. So um, any other questions on that? Okay, the last thing I do before I start my meeting, um, before the meeting even starts, is I share my screen. That is if I'm doing a presentation. So for any of you who joined prior to the meeting coming on, you saw the very first screen that I was working on. So I always start with my virtual meeting. I turn this on, I share my screen, everybody can see it. There is no challenges or anything that I am facing. Um, it all just works effectively. So when I come back to this screen, right, and you can see everything that's on there and I know everything that I do. If I am leading a presentation, a PowerPoint presentation like I am today, I do a full test of the PowerPoint presentation. How does everything click through? Does it click through in order? The same way I would if I'm in person. You know, one of the things that I really recommend is that you actually do a practice run. Really take the time to see what your participants are going to see so that it looks great. So you can lead uh, your entire meeting without any problems or anything else. 
which leads to another point, which is I recommend that if you're going to be sharing a document, that you PDF everything that you can. And there's a reason behind that. Number one is if you're sharing a Word document, it will have the red squiggly line under misspelled words, but sometimes those words aren't misspelled. They're just not in the Word, Microsoft Word dictionary. So I always have the PDF that I am going to be sharing open and ready to go so that there's no problems. However, glitches are going to happen. And instead of panicking or wondering what's going to happen, just be cool. Silence is just fine. Try not to panic. Remember that people can see your face. So if you suddenly go, we all know that something must have just gone wildly wrong with your presentation. And so you want to make sure that, that everything is happening exactly, exactly as you wanted it to happen. And so making sure that you are just being cool when glitches happen and it doesn't and it doesn't matter so looking at everything as business as usual and silence until you can figure it out or what you can do is you can just go ahead and stop sharing your video conference for just a second turn your camera off while you get your stuff together and then when you're back on you can just go ahead and come live you're back everything is good and business as usual so that is where I make sure that it's going to happen. Glitches are going to happen. Be cool with them. Don't make excuses. Don't say the internet is so crappy here. Don't say I don't know what's wrong with my computer. Just business as usual. Okay, so I always make sure that you are looking at all of those um, at all of those things. To John, um, and to, to answer your question, John said, what software allows you to keep people in the lobby while you check? Um, that's one of the reasons why when you start the meeting, you can click on your camera and you can click on your microphone and do both of those things before you go live. So most of the video conferencing software will allow you to check the way that you look before, um, before turning on your video conference. Um, if you're wondering how anything looks, that's why you do a practice run. Log in with somebody else at your house or one of your own other coworkers or something like that and go ahead and, and take care of it that way um, and go from there. And then Mark Dedman asked a question about what to wear. Um, and actually, I'm going to be talking about that. But yes, if you can stick to a plain color, it is much easier to um, not have any distracting movements with patterns or stripes or anything like that. So um, for those of you who know me, you only see me in black and white, and that's for that reason, because patterns are actually very distracting um, whenever anything is being recorded. So, <laughs> so he starts moving, just starts swaying back and forth, back and forth. So. How about that? What questions do we have about sharing your screen? Anybody have any thoughts or other ideas? I have a question. Yeah, go ahead. Um, I'm looking at my screen and I can see Roger, Randy, Kelly, Mark, and somebody's name I can't read at the bottom. And I know that there are other people on. Why can't mm -hmm. I see the rest of them? So um, in the upper right hand corner, you either have the person who is talking or you have gallery. And so if you click on the settings, you should be able to see a different screen of everybody who is showing. And then once you get to that option, you can click who's talking, active cameras or hide everyone. So it just depends. And it also depends upon how big your screen is. If you're looking at your phone or your iPad, they may be just squashing down who is there, but you can scroll. You can scroll up to see anyone else. One of the things that I like doing whenever I'm leading a big meeting where I know anywhere from 20 to 40 people might be joining or more, what I will do is I actually will just click active cameras 
and then everyone else disappears. It's actually a really nice function because then I'm only looking at the people who are there versus all of the big gray screens um, of everyone else. So that is one of the things. Does that help, Charles? Yes, that's helpful. Thank you. Okay, you're welcome. You're welcome. And so um, making sure that you're looking at it that way. Um, one of the biggest glitches that happens is unfortunately your internet speed and what is your what is happening in the background so i'm going to tell you what to do but i'm also going to tell you don't do it right now because when you run an internet speed test it drags everything down and your connection to the video conference will change so don't do it right now but i am going to show you how you can test what your internet speed is and how to do it so all you have to do is click Go or Google internet speed test. A window will pop up and it says run test and you can run the test and it will show you what your speed is. Don't do it right now, but that's all you have to do. So here's my recommendations for your download and upload speed is you want them to be both greater than 10 megabits. Okay, that's what you want. Anything greater than 10, you're gonna be amazing. If you have anything lower than that, what it's going to affect is your video conference or your video quality. If you are not showing video, you could go all the way down to one megabits. But if you want anything that is better or higher quality, then you want greater than 10. So I'm going to share with you, because I did this test this morning, and so I'm just gonna quickly share a different screen with you again uh, on what I found and how it worked out. So here is my second screen again, and my internet speed that I ran today was 283 on the download and 39.9 on the upload. So then it tells you your internet speed is very fast. Your internet connection should be able to handle multiple devices streaming hd videos video conferencing and gaming all at the same time and you can see if you can read behind the gray um right in the area to the left of the window that's popped up all i you can see that all i did was i googled internet speed test so i'm going to close this window so you can see it again i googled internet speed test and i clicked this button that says run speed test again don't do it right now it will change and all of your video conferencing will change, okay? Since we're here, I am gonna show you quickly. Somebody's phone's ringing, tell them I'll call them back later. We can hear you. Hello. Oh, we can hear you Hello. talking. Yep, still hear you. See, this is- this Hi, is can you hear me? Okay. Let's see who that is and I can mute them because that is how I mute everything for some reason. Who answered their phone? Can we see anybody? Okay, well, they're gone. Or they hung up. They're gone. Anyway, so we can go ahead and share that. Um, again, like I said, here is the go-to meeting software that I use. This is their website. Um, they have plans and pricing right here on the website for you. I have the business platform, which is $16 a month um, and allows you up to have 250 participants, or you can do $12 a month. 144 bucks a year um, if you do it monthly. Um, and that allows up to 150 participants. And then here is Zoom plans and pricing. And it's very comparable to um, what GoToMeeting has. So all of these options are available to you here. Um, and then, like I said, or you could just use Teams, which is completely free. And you can also lead a team meeting with external people if they have Microsoft 365. Again, it's one of the reasons why I don't necessarily like having it this way. One of the other things that I really do enjoy um, about um, making sure that you are sharing what you need to share and using the right software that you need to use is that just leading a meeting without any background or any shared screen is also really nice but you have to make sure that you're sharing your camera correctly so you can see that ellen 
has shared her camera, but we can't see her. And so sometimes I will say, hey, Ellen, by the way, we can't see you. Do you have your visor shutting your camera off? Do you have your camera on your laptop open? And so trying to get people that even though we can see Ellen is sharing her camera, we can't see her smiling face. So it really does make it effective when we um, are, are going through it this way. So what questions? Oh, I'm seeing some chats. Let me jump back into chat. Um, okay. Mark, it won't let me back in. Mark, you're there in. Okay, you're there. Okay. Can we can see you, Mark? Can you hear and see us? Deadman? Or is he frozen? No, he's there. Okay, he's back in there. He sent me a private message saying it won't let him back in, but we're good. Okay. Thoughts, ideas, questions on internet speed, on sharing your screens, on doing all of these, uh, all of these different things. Anything that is happening here. Okay, so good. Now uh, I'm going to go back to sharing my presentation again for you. And we're going to talk next about looking your professional best. So as you start jumping into going in to video conferencing, there are a couple of things that make you look really great. And that is adjusting your camera any way you can so that it's at head level versus looking up at you. So most everyone has um, this figured out perfectly. Um, with Charles, I would try and adjust the camera so it's more head level. One of the things that I have done with that is I will put my laptop and I've done video conferencing from hotel rooms your luggage is the perfect height <laughs> to have your camera raised just enough. So I recommend putting your, you know, finding a box that you can set your laptop on or getting a mount that you can put your camera on so you can adjust it. My camera sits on top of my monitors. And when I sit down, I have to adjust my camera so that people can see me. But if, you're have, if you have a square on view, it's just much easier. So if you can find a box or something that you can raise your laptop on or your computer on, so it's a more of a square level, then it just changes the view just enough and it makes it work really well. So adjust your camera. The second thing is to um, avoid bright windows. Um, Charles, you can see that he has kind of that halo effect happening behind him. Kelly has a, a bright window over there behind her. It's not distracting with Kelly because it's far enough away. Um, but if you can adjust in any way, same with Mark. Mark has a bright window behind him. It's See how she just adjusted hers? Like Kelly just adjusted hers and was able to avoid the windows. And it suddenly changes the whole view. And it just makes it look a little bit better. Like with John, he has, I'm assuming, closet doors or the doors to his office behind him where it just changes the view. That is the very specific reason why I face my desk in my office to the white wall behind me. Just so it's just a white wall, it's not distracting, it's not anything. And I try to keep it as simple as I can so that there's nothing distracting behind me. Um, and then... You wear plain colored clothing um, as many at, or as, as often as you can. Try and avoid the bright stripes, the bright anything, so that um, it doesn't have that movement. Um, basically, the exact thing that Mark was talking about as we were getting into the training today. So that is how you can really look your professional best. Now, just because I think it's really fun, and because we're all working from home and we all have our best appearance on top, we all know that it is likely that we are wearing jeans, your yoga pants, your pajama pants, whatever it might be on the bottom, and especially your house shoes. So here you go. You get, you get my house shoes. That's what you get. And that's what this is normal, right? So go ahead. Show me your house shoes. Come on, everybody. Bring them up. Let's do it quick. Bring, there's Kelly's. 
Roger, come on. <laughs> that's, that's what it is. We're all, we know that we're all casual in this, but it is also super fun. And that is what we want to do is that whenever you can, um, I know working from home is very new for most of us, um, especially at this level. And so make sure that you still have fun with it. And that yes, we're wearing our socks or our house shoes or anything else as we do our video conferencing, but try and make it as least distracting as possible as you go into it. Okay, so that is the end of our training. I have a couple of more things to wrap up as we close, but I wanna make sure that um, if we have any other questions, go ahead and unmute, go ahead and use the chat window. Does anybody have anything that they want to add or ask questions about today. No questions. We're just all good. Well, great. wonderful. So as we wrap up the training, I want to make sure that if you haven't connected with us, uh, me or with Skillway yet, that you do. You know, I want to make sure if you have thoughts, ideas, or questions. If you want me to train this entire training for your team, turns out all of us have more time um, in our schedule where we are doing that. I have two different presentations that I am doing. This one is just how to lead an effective meeting, but I also have another training that I am doing that is going to be a little similar to this and adding some, and that is how to sell virtually. Um, I have sold projects in Phoenix, and in St. Louis and in New York and in California, I've sold projects across the country doing it this way. That you don't have to stop selling just because we're now not able to meet face to face. And so I am doing that training for our city current partners um, on Thursday of this week. I'm going to be giving some of these same tips, but then I'm going to spend a little bit more time on the presentation and how to prospect and how to lead a presentation. And I'm going to be sharing a PDF on how to actually sell. And that's what the training is gonna be about on Thursday. Um, for those of you that want my help or want our help from Skillway, I would be honored to, um, to help any of you out and lead this training for, for your teams as well. So that wraps up our training. I am so thankful that you all took some time to let me see your face because I need faces. <laughs> I need interaction. I need to see all of this. And if you need anything, please let me know. Thanks so much for attending today. Bye, everybody. Thanks, Jen.